Welcome back to the channel. I'm that handy friend and today we are putting a tune on my snowboard. I ride my snowboard once a year. As I've gotten older I ride less and less. I used to ride pretty much every single day after school when I was going through like high school and, and stuff like that. I'd go after work, I'd go after school, it didn't matter. I was riding every single day but as I've gotten older I ride a lot less. I just don't have the time to get out on the slopes like I used to. So I do a once a year tune up on my board and this is the board that I'm riding right now. It's a LibTech hot knife. It's a few years old at this point, but it's really only been ridden about five or six times. So it's basically brand new, <laughs> especially cause I ride like an old man now. I don't ride like a uh, 16 something trying to prove anything. Um, but essentially I'm just gonna walk you through what I do to keep this board ready to go um, the one time a year that I use it and I'm going to be using it tomorrow so I just wanted to make sure that it's topped up. With that let's get into what I'm going to be using today to do this tuning. So over here we have just a bottle of spray water. There's nothing special here it's literally just water. I'll use that to clean the base off. I don't use degreasers or anything like that. I know you could or should but honestly I've never done that and I don't have any problems. This is a P-Tex. This is just like a base filler. So if I have any large gouges or anything in the base, I can melt some of that and fill it in and then uh, scrape it clean with a razor blade and it'll give me a nice flat surface. I've obviously got my iron here and that's an adjustable iron so I can put it to whatever setting I need depending on the wax that I choose. So I've got a couple of different Swix waxes here for the, the temperature. Um, I'll have to look at the weather and see what the weather's gonna be tomorrow and then I'll pick the one that I'm gonna use. And then I've got a couple of scrapers here, wax scrapers. And one thing that I didn't used to do that I started doing as I got older and kicked myself over and over again for not doing is sharpening these scrapers. Just an old piece of sandpaper, a new piece of sand, whatever. Sharpen your scrapers before you use them. It's a night and day difference when it comes to scraping wax off. It's so much faster and easier and you get a way better finish with a sharp scraper than you do with a dull one. So sharpen them up on there real quick and they'll be good to go. And then I've just got uh, a coarse hair brush right here. And I have also got, um, what the heck's this stuff even called anymore? I don't even remember. Scotch-Brite? Yeah, Scotch-Brite. I've just got some Scotch-Brite. So usually what I'll do is I'll go scotch bright and then I'll finish with the horsehair brush. So you'll see me do that process too in a minute. Um, besides that, you're also gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver usually to do the, uh, do the bindings in there. But mine are already loose, as you can see. This one's a little bit tighter, but it's, it's still loose. Um, I loosen my bindings up as soon as I come home from riding now because I don't wanna leave the, uh, what are they called? I guess the the nuts, for lack of a better word, that are embedded in the board. I don't want to leave them under tension for a year until I ride it again, so I'll loosen those up. And I also like to loosen them up before I wax. I know that people say if you leave the um, binding screws under tension when you're waxing, it can cause divots in the underside of the board where the screws screw in, but uh, I have never, I mean, I went years and I never did that and I never had a single problem. I've even melted snowboards with uh, an iron that was too hot that I wasn't paying close enough attention to and I didn't have that problem. So I'm not sure how true that is or how false that is, but I'm not looking to find out. So now that I got the board flipped over, screws are loose. First thing I'm going to do is take a look at my edge and honestly, this edge looks so good. Like it is in really good shape. It pretty much looks brand new. Um, I am never one to tune my edges. I am a self-proclaimed very sloppy rider, so I don't like to have super sharp edges because I will catch them and wind up on my butter back more than I care. So this edge, it's, it's got a little bite. It's not crazy sharp, but it, it's got enough that it'll grab. And we're coming into spring anyways, so I'm not expecting the conditions to be super, um, super icy, but I'm gonna be pushing probably some heavier snow. So the first step, hit it with a little bit of water. Not a crazy amount. I just wanna go ahead and wipe down the uh, base here. Get off any loose dust, dirt, 
that's kind of built on there. You can use degreasers, and they recommend using degreasers probably to get the old wax and stuff off, but I've never done that. Honestly, I've never had any issues with my wax jobs working well, so I'm just going to do it like this. And I like to use just a little bit of water because I want it to dry off. I mean, it doesn't have to all dry off, but it's better if it dries off. You don't want to be working on a wet board. So now that I've got my water done, we'll take a look at the base and see if we have any spots that need PTEX. And I can kind of tell you already, there's not any on this board. If there were, they'd be pretty obvious. You can see there's light scratching here. Um, but honestly, like I said earlier, there's another light scratch. I kind of ride like a grandpa now. I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody. I'm not ripping crazy trails. I'm not riding off rocks. I'm not doing anything in the park. like. I know this is a park board, don't give me too much trouble. I used to try to ride park very badly, but <laughs> I don't do that so much anymore. So now that we don't need to do any P-TEX, I will, uh, I'll actually cut in a picture of my other snowboard base so you can see what this looks like on the base when it's, when it's all done. I needed to pick my wax. So I'm gonna go with CH8 because it's supposed to be fairly warm tomorrow. It's actually supposed to be raining, so I'm hoping the rain passes and we just get some nice spring weather, but uh, this is the warmest one I've got. This one goes from uh, what is that? 20, 25 to 39 Fahrenheit. And I need to set my iron to 130. So if I look at my iron in here, there's this little notch and that's pointed up between the 120 and the 140. So that's all set to 130. I am going to plug my iron in and give it a minute to warm up. And then I will show you melting the wax on the board. One other note. Having an extension cord, even one of these little cheapy ones, this thing doesn't draw a ton of amperage, but these are so helpful for doing this job because that cord often isn't long enough to reach wherever you need to go. And I mean, I've done this job out on like the corners of a porch railing or something, wherever I can basically prop my snowboard up like this. So if you have a little extension cord like this, it's super helpful when you need to do this job. You can't really see it on camera, but this light um, just went out. When that light goes out, that's the indicator that it's up to temperature. And I also like to I like to take a paper towel or a shop towel or something and just wipe the bottom of it off to get off any old wax that might be on there. You gotta kinda be quick because this thing's gonna be warm. But uh, that's the way to do it. Alright, so hopefully this rig works out. I've just got my camera literally wrapped around my arm to get this shot, but. All you want to do is you take your wax here and you're just going to melt it on. You see it start to run down and then it just drips on the board. Try and get a better shot of the drip. And it's best to keep moving while you do this. You don't need a crazy amount of wax, but you want enough to cover the whole thing without putting a ton of heat into it. So that's all I'll do. That's that's what I got left. You saw I use almost three quarters of an inch of that. All right, and then next, you see all these nice drips. You just take your iron and just float it. Don't push down. Just float it, and see it all starts to melt out. Make sure you don't work in one spot. Also. If you leave this sitting in one spot, it will burn through your board and it will melt it and you're going to have a really, really bad time. If you're getting a spot that's not really melting well, just come back to it in a couple minutes and it will melt. Um, there's, there's no rush. Just take your time and chill out doing this. This is kind of the fun part, spreading the wax. It's a little therapeutic. It lets you just mellow out and enjoy the, I don't know, the mellow bits of just melting wax on a board as far as maintenance goes this is probably some of the, the more fun stuff in my opinion at least i'd much rather do this than like oil changes or having to replace air filters and, and stuff in my motorized vehicles so it's kind of just a nice quiet time i'll usually have music going obviously not right now because i'm trying to record a video but play some music while i do this and just kind of get into it and you can see like the edge here I'm just starting to get that glossy. It's not glossy here, but you just kind of work the wax over to it. And 
no harm if you don't have enough wax on the board you can always come back and add some more it's not the end of the world to add more wax in fact it doesn't matter at all so if you don't have enough to cover the surface just add a few more drips because there's no point in trying to work a small amount of wax over your whole board and potentially ruining your board when you could just uh, you know add a little bit more but I'm gonna put you down while I finish this out and then I'll pick you back up when we get to the next step. Another tip to mention to know if your board is getting too hot, put your hand on the underside wherever you're working and if you can feel the heat, it's too hot. Right here, it's a smidge warm. Nothing, I expect up here, yeah. Right here in the middle, I worked a little too long but it's just, just barely warm. Um, I just finished. So now I'm just gonna let the board cool down it's already cool right here where I kind of started, but it's, it's warm right here, it's warm here, and it's warm up here. So I'm gonna let the board cool down. And while I let the board cool down, I'm going to start to prepare my next step, getting my wax scraper sharpened up. So let me get my wax out of here. And to do this, it's really simple. You just grab an old piece of sandpaper, grab a wax scraper, try to hold it perfectly at 90 if you can. That's gonna get you the best edges. You can see it's all scratched up along that edge. That's that's good. This is what the other side looks like. I guess it looks pretty much exactly the same, but you, I, I can feel that this edge is sharp and this edge is kind of just round, round and smooth. So I'll sharpen up both edges and then I should be good to go. It's been a few minutes now and this thing's cool to the touch. There's no, no hot spots anymore. Maybe uh, slightly warm spots, but nothing's hot. And I have my nice sharpened up scraper here so one thing I will say before I start scraping if you're doing this inside like I am make sure you have a nice clear floor not uh, a bunch of stuff you have to clean around like I wouldn't want to do this over here with buckets and stuff because it's a lot easier to vacuum a nice empty floor than it is to vacuum around a bunch of stuff and I like to vacuum up all this wax because otherwise it sticks to my shoes I track it all over the place and it just makes a horrible mess so when you're scraping these, I know there's probably a, a specific method, tip to tail, whatever, that's what you're supposed to do kind of with, with all of it, but for this step, I don't think it really matters that much. And you can either hold the scraper like this, you know, and, and pull the wax away, whoops, or you can hold it like this and push the wax, and I'll kind of do both. Um, there's no, no rhyme or reason really, I'll, I'll do whatever works in the moment. So I'm going to just go ahead and scrape this because I need both hands and then we can take a look at it once it's done being scraped. All right, I just finished scraping it down. It took me, a, I don't know, five minutes. It's not too long. And having the sharp edge makes a big difference, but I will say I sharpened this side and this side. So I had four sharp edges in total and I used all four on my first pass. And then I went back over to my sandpaper, sharpened up one edge again, just to do my final pass with. And what you want to see out of your final pass is like almost nothing okay you can see the board looks nice and smooth there's no waves like there were when the wax was on there it's all perfectly even I'll grab a towel here and just wipe this down real quick for the next step in the process because I don't want to be grinding any of this wax back into the board I want to make sure that I keep it nice and clean so that I don't have any sticky spots and then, honestly, it's been a while since I've done this, but I'm pretty sure I do this guy next. Yeah, and then I finish with the horse hair. That's what I'm gonna do, I don't care, whatever. So this one, I do think there is a little bit more rhyme and reason to making sure you go at least the length of the board. Never scrape this way, by the way. I know I was, also I didn't say anything about that. Never scrape side to side. Always scrape in the direction of the board. And the same thing applies to this, so. All this is doing is it's kind of smoothing out any additional sticky spots or tall spots that might have been left on the uh, the wax when it got scraped. And it's also just making like micro grooves, I guess, in the finish of the base to kind of help things move a little bit smoother. I don't really know if any of that matters or if what I'm saying is completely accurate. So 
That's just something I heard many, many years ago when I started doing this. And I'll just do one more pass here. And then I'll switch up to the stiff bristle brush. So once again, I'm gonna take my sheet, fold it over so I'm not, like look at all the wax that pulled off of that, yeah. So I'm gonna fold it over so I'm using this side, wipe everything down again. There we go. And then last but not least is the stiff bristle brush. brush. And this one, again, you can kind of see what it does. You see the groove, like these, can't get them in the light, but these grooves right here, those are from this brush. And again, you want to try and keep this as straight as possible, applying some moderate pressure. And you want to go all the way from one end to the other. Just like that. And you're not gonna go crazy with this. I'm just trying to make sure I cover the whole whole base before I call it quits with this, this brush. So there we go. That's it. Now, this board's ready to rock and roll. I am not gonna do anything else to this. All I'm gonna do is tighten up my binding screws and it's ready to hit the mountain. And then once I'm done tomorrow, I'm gonna loosen those screws stick it back on the wall right there and sit till next year when I do this again. I hope you guys like this one. If you found it helpful, give me a thumbs up and uh, as always, have a good one.